What's up, guys? It's another episode of a draft review. This time, we're going to be talking about the New York Giants with your boy, Bernard Brook. And today, we're going to be looking at both sides of the ball before we get into a mock draft preview for the draft next week. So, first off, let's talk about their offense. Obviously, you have Daniel Jones and Tyra Taylor at quarterback. Daniel Jones was just signed to a four-year, $160 million deal. Um, you know, as a Cowboys fan, I'm very happy about that because... He has not really shown too much since being in the league. Last year he had a good year. He was 15 touchdowns, five intercept guy. But I mean, I don't know if it's $40 million a year type guy, but we'll see how that works out for them. And then a running back, obviously Saquon and Brita. Saquon was franchise tag. He still hasn't signed it though, but he should be fine. I, I doubt he doesn't end up coming back to the Giants. And then wide receivers kind of underrated for the Giants. They had a pretty good offseason there getting Paris Campbell and uh, Jamison Crowder to go with Sterling Shepard, Wandale, Isaiah, who really broke out last year, and then uh, long-term giant Darius Slayton. Uh, that's a good six core where if you're the Giants, I don't really think you need to go wide receiver round one unless there's like a guy like maybe Jordan Addison available at 26. And then obviously they also brought in Darren Waller from the Gi or from the uh, Raiders in the offseason, which is a big acquisition. Obviously Daniel Bellinger isn't bad, but he's also not a Darren Waller. So that's definitely a huge upgrade for the Giants there. And then also there are two tackles who Evan Neal was up and down last year, but was overall pretty good. Andrew Thomas was one of the best, if not the best tackle in the league. At guard, with, at left guard at least, with Shane Limitex and Joshua Zudu, it's not the best. It could be better, but honestly, I think center's more of a problem now with Ben Bredesen. It's just... That interior line has to be fixed for the Giants if they want to be big this year because neither one of those guys really turned out to be anything. Mark Lenowski, he's had his moments. He's been up and down as well. Still don't know if you want to have him be your starter for a team that just came out of the playoffs. But then now let's also take a look at that D-line. But Jahad Ward was a really good player for the Giants last year. Really broke out on the scene even more than he has beforehand. Uh, then you have on the interior. I mean, besides Dexter Lawrence on the interior, it's kind of weak. I mean, DJ Davidson, don't really think he's going to be anything. Hakeem hasn't really shown much. But at least next to them, you do have Leonard Williams because Ryder Anderson is not very much in either. It's just a very, 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 very weak interior D line after Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams, who are both two pro bowlers, but after that, it's very off. And obviously, the rookie last year, Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, I mean, he had four sacks last year. Not great for a rookie, but he also didn't play a lot of games because he was injured at the beginning of the year. The linebacker core could be better, could be worse. I mean, Aziz, it's always been a thing with Aziz, is health. As long as he's healthy, he's going to be good. He just has to stay healthy. Gerard and Bobby, I mean, they're serviceable. They're not anything special, but they can play you one or two seasons. And then, you know, that – I don't know about that secondary. Adore Jackson, you know, had a good year last year as well. Darnay, big play at Holmes, has always been a guy that the Giants have liked. Um, I don't know if you want him to be CB2. I mean, I don't think they put Cordell Flott as CB2 over him. I still think they need another guy. Amani Oriarie was a guy for the Lions a couple years ago who they thought was going to break out big time. But ended up kind of having a bad year last year and worked his way to the Giants on a one-year deal. And then obviously a safety with Bobby McKinney and Xavier McKinney. McKinney has become a real steal for the Giants back in the 2020 draft. Bobby McCain, he's been kind of passed around in the league now. But he can be a serviceable safety after they lost Julian Love to the uh, Seahawks. But this team, I like Dane Belton maybe to eventually come up and start over Bobby McCain. If he can be a strong safety, we'll have to see. All right, so now we're going to start with a Giants mock draft. They picked kind of later in the first round at 26, so we'll see what's available. There's different kind of needs for the Giants, but we'll see what ends up becoming the most. So let's go ahead and skip here to the 26th pick. Now we see the quarterbacks and the edge rushers are going to start flying at the board early on. Surprise, the corners haven't started going yet, but mock drafts aren't always going to be correct. And there's a lot of reaches half the time. What you guys following though in this range? If you're the Giants, I mean, there's some pretty good, pretty good players on the board here. I mean, as interesting enough as Bijan is, you're not going to take him just because. Let's be honest. I mean, 
there's just no way he makes it here, and you're not taking him with Bijan on the roster. Now, getting a guy like JSN to be on that wide receiver core with Slayton and other guys as well, I mean, it's not bad, but I think corner is way more of a need for the Giants here than wide receiver is. So I'd rather just take Joey Porter to go along with Adoree Jackson, Darnay Holmes, and Cordell Flott. I mean, that really boosts your secondary more. And I mean, it kind of gets rid of the cornerback problem in general. I mean, Cordell Flott and Darnay Holmes can easily be a three and four guy. Amani Oriare can be a very, very, very good CB5. So I mean, that kind of fills in a very strong need for the Giants there at 26. At 58 here, hmm. As much as I want to go to Luke Musgrave, obviously. Oh, there he goes anyway. But interior O-line would be huge here for the Giants. I think Cody Mosh can really be that guy. If you look at him here, I mean, big frame, 6'6", 301. Guy out of North uh, Dakota State. I mean, he is kind of on the older side a little bit. But I think this guy can come in for the Giants and be a starter day one, either at left guard or right guard. And, I mean, if he's there at 58, I think that's a no-doubter pick for the Giants. They also have a pick at 90 as well. I'm surprised wide receivers listed a number one need for them. I just don't see it. I think that six is actually a really good core. Especially it's built around that offense with Daniel Jones, Darren Waller, and Saquon Barkley. I don't think they need that whole kind of diva wide receiver one type body in their system. I think really they just need to keep adding quality pieces to the defense and that line if they want to continue getting better and compete for the NFC East. This is kind of tougher here for the Giants. A lot of good linebackers on the board. Maybe you would go hit and hooker, get your backup quarterback. Maybe he can eventually be a starter if Daniel Jones doesn't turn out on his four-year deal. I believe they have an opt-out after the second year. And I think that's what I'm going to do is get a hit and hooker for the Giants here at 90. I mean, hooker has a strong arm, obviously towards ACL last year, so he might be ready for training camp. It's going to be iffy. But either way, they're getting a guy that quite literally – Probably would have been a round one quarterback if it wasn't for his injury last year. I mean, he would have been up there with guys with probably Will Levis and Anthony Richardson. He wasn't on the level of Stroud or Young, but he was one of the better quarterbacks in this class coming into the year. So let me pick here again at 129. Let's see who's still going to be on the board by the time we pick. Still don't need, obviously, running backs. Overshawn is an interesting prospect. I don't know how well he fits in the Giants system as much as a Noah Sewell would. I kind of like Muhammad from Utah here as well, though. It's a lot of interesting pieces, and the Giants really need depth in that linebacker group and on that edge rushing group. But I think for here, I think I'm going to go Noah Sewell from Oregon. Smaller guy, obviously from Nate Sewell's uh, younger brother. But he's a guy that can come in. Maybe he starts year one. I don't think you want him to start, though. I think Bobby probably still has that uh, starting role. I mean, if Aziz gets hurt, I think Noah can slot right into that position. And, I mean, it's still a drop-off from Aziz, but it's not too big of a drop-off where the Giants can't survive. Let's see who's still going to be on edge. Don't really like a lot of the people on edge here. Beck 162. I think Nick Herbig is really the only guy you'd be willing to take. EQ, I just think I just think it's a little bit too too rich for me. So I think Nick Herbig is the pick out of Wisconsin. Another edge rusher to boof uh, that uh, edge rushing group for the Giants behind your hard Ward and Kayvon Thibodeau. But it's not great depth. I wish the Giants would have went out and signed somebody else to go with them, but it could be worse. Ooh, it's kind of interesting. Giants here at 174. I think you can take a shot on a wide receiver here, and honestly, Jada Reed from Michigan State is most definitely that guy. If we look here, get a guy who's probably going to beat out Jamison Crowder, I'd say, if he had the thing. I didn't think he could come in and be wide receiver six pretty easily. The Giants just have a good strength of just above average wide receivers or average wide receivers on the roster, and it's honestly worked out perfectly for them with the Daniel Jones system. Now, will it continue to work going into next year? We'll see, but I have a feeling it probably will. Now, I don't know if it'll be enough to compete with the Eagles or the Cowboys, but for the Giants, I mean, it's safe to say that it's kind of hard to compete with those two teams right now. So here we are again. 211. Not a lot here. Actually, standing out.
But Moro Ojamu, the edge rusher from Texas, is kind of interesting here. 6'3", 281 body frame. You know, didn't play too much in Texas to the past few years, but it's put up some decent stats. And here in the sixth round, I think it's a shot you can take at 211. Now, I think we have one pick left in this draft for the Giants here. And really, I feel like we've covered all their needs pretty well. I mean, you get your corner to fill up that need across from Adore Jackson. You get some interior line help with Cody Motch out of North Dakota State. You get your backup quarterback who maybe could one day be a starting quarterback for you, depending on how Daniel Jones does. Obviously, you get your two edge rusher depths, you get a wide receiver, and you get a very good uh, linebacker out of Oregon. And see, who, I don't know if he's going to be able to start day one. It's going to be interesting to see, though. I mean, if you're the Giants 242, it has to be Makai Blackman from the NFC. I mean, that's just too easy of a pick. Get another corner depth. And then, I mean, pretty much the same thing here at 245. If Robert Beal Jr. is still on the board, I think the home run kind of pick for the Giants late in the round. I didn't realize that he had so many picks late in this draft, though. Same with the Chiefs and the Niners. Interesting, actually. Pick here, 256. Kind of just a shot in the dark. I mean... Brenton Cox Jr. has been rumored to be good for so long and just never was. I kind of like Jackson Kirkland here, though. Obviously a tackle, which is more of depth for them. But, I mean, if you're the Giants, I feel like you're feeling pretty happy with this mock draft. You fill up a lot of different needs. And quite honestly, it puts you in a position to compete with the Eagles and the Cowboys for the uh, division next year. You're still probably one or two years away, but you're taking steps in the right path, which is huge for the Giants, who haven't took the right steps in a very long time. Thank you for watch all watching today. This was the New York Giants Draft Preview. Make sure to like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.